I am on a road. It is small and so narrow that I can only walk on it by putting one foot directly in front of the other. There is no room for variance on either side, no ditch, no guardrails, just a narrow sliver of embankment on both sides. On one side of the narrow road runs a bottomless flow of fire that goes as far as the eye can see. Sparks fly through the air and cinch the grass on the narrow strip beside the narrow path. I have no shoes on. I cannot look at this thing too long for my eyes sting in water. The path is dusty, but the ground is soft and feels good on my bare feet. On the other side of the road are countless multitudes of every type of person. Only each person is doing their own thing, creating idols and potions. Dressed in Mardi Gras clothing, they are clinging cymbals and clacking castanets, each dressed most more opulently than the next. The men and women have makeup caked on their faces, red blush, red lipstick, blue blush, blue lipstick, every color and style you can imagine. From their mouths flow blasphemies of every sort. The people with the wagons sound like carnival barkers, auctioneers, and medicine quacks from the Old West. Their wagons are lined up and emblazoned with their symbols of witchcraft, logos, and idols. Come and get it, they called out. All the answers right here. The way to eternal life right here for only $19.99. The next wagon, $50. Only $50 to find out what Jesus says about your future in a tarot reading. The next wagon, step right up, folks. For only $100, you can get this prayer cloth soaked in holy water. Guaranteed to produce a miracle. Only $100. Only here. Each wagon I passed, more blasphemous and more ridiculous. My feet walk on a narrow path, but my head turns this way and that way. It is hard to not look at the carnival atmosphere. Further on, the masses thin out a little, and there are tables with claws and pamphlets displayed on top. And behind the tables, sweet little church ladies with their hair all done up under flowered hats. They look like Aunt B from the Andy Griffith Show, only with big brooches and fleecy shirts and fancy rings on their fingers. They smile sweetly and pretty words flow off their tongues. They shower me with compliments as I walk by. I love your hair. Your shirt is marvelous. Aren't you a sweet little thing? In front of each lady was a collection plate and a placard that read, To increase wealth, give wealth. I suddenly stumble on a small stone sticking up slightly in the road. I was not looking where I was going. I was watching a man blow fire from his mouth. As he said he could do his own miracles, he blew fire into the sky, and it rained down on the people bowed down in front of him. Millions of people, they looked so tiny. He was giant, and he could bend down and pluck a person up here and there and set them directly in front of him by his big throne. They were beautiful people, queens and princes and kings and queens celebrities and men who look like women, women who look like men, the few he plucked up from the millions huddled in front of me, in front of him. He was black as night. He lifted his arms like a puppeteer, and the beautiful people in front of him stood up. He bent his arm, and they bowed to him. He lifted them up and slammed his arms down, and they fell on their faces. He lifted his arms again, and the people stood up, only now they had no faces. They are featureless. I am so engrossed with the scene, I stumble on a pile of small pebbles and follow, fall onto one knee. My other leg slips off the edge as I fall. I cry out, Jesus, help me, and I am gently pushed back onto the narrow path. I look straight ahead now and down at the path and try to ignore the world on one side and hell on the other. I am made to stop by a gentle tap on my shoulder. I stop and look up and see a teen boy all beat up on his knees in his room. I can hear his mom screaming at him to unlock his door. The boy is praying, praying fervently for God to save him. He is asking for Jesus to come and get him. I yell, Jesus loves you so much, and he stands up and jumps for joy. I look up and see angels singing and rejoicing. They are so very happy. I continue walking, a tap on my shoulder. I stop. I see an old man on his deathbed, repenting sincerely with his final breath. Again the angels rejoice. My narrow road winds in and out of great dismay to small but fantastic victories.
When I look behind me, I can see silhouettes far in the distance of a teen boy and an old man on their own journey on the small, small dusty path. I would that I could stop and wait for one of them to keep me company, but I know I cannot walk their path with them. I have to walk my own on my own. The journey is not easy. In fact, it is the hardest road I have ever walked. Yet it is also the easiest in the sense that the horrible things of the world are not part of our path if we so choose not to be in it. The small road is lonely only because few choose to travel it. Still, my journey is not your journey, but the path that always leads to the same place, redemption, mercy, salvation, grace, love. May the Lord bless and keep you. May his countenance shine upon you on your journey home. Amen and Shalom. Mary Little Sparrow. Jesus loves you.